Swelling of the chest or breast and even the arm is common after breast cancer surgery and radiation. Sometimes the swelling is just from the surgery or inflammation and it will be temporary and go away when someone is done healing. But for others, the swelling can be lymphedema, which is a chronic condition without a cure and the swelling can last long term. My name is Kelly and I'm a physical therapist and I specialize in oncology rehab and lymphedema. In this video, I'm going to explain who is at risk for lymphedema of the breast and the chest as well as the arm. Before we begin, make sure to subscribe down below for weekly new videos. You can also join us on Instagram for more related content on cancer recovery and rehab and you can check out our website for other resources. After surgery, there's going to be some level of swelling that occurs. It's a normal response to surgery and swelling can take four to six weeks to decrease. For some, it'll be quicker, and for others, the swelling may linger on for months. We call this post-surgical swelling, and it is usually temporary. For swelling that occurs long-term and doesn't go away, this is typically lymphedema of the breast or chest or arm. It's common to hear about the risk of lymphedema in the arm after surgery, but often the breast lymphedema isn't brought up or monitored as closely. However, it really should be. So who is at risk for developing lymphedema of the breast or chest? The biggest risk factor for developing lymphedema in the arm is the number of lymph nodes removed. The greater the number, the greater the risk. Individuals have between 20 and 40 lymph nodes in an armpit, which is also known as an axilla, and some lymph nodes may be removed for a biopsy to check for cancer, while others may be taken out if cancer has spread to the lymph nodes. So if someone has had less than five lymph nodes removed, we call this a sentinel lymph node biopsy, then the risk of getting lymphedema in the arm is less than 8% chance in someone's lifetime. If someone had eight or more lymph nodes removed, that's called an axillary dissection, the number does increase to around 25% risk or chance. Radiation to this area also increases someone's risk for lymphedema by about four to 5% on top of the lymph node removal risk. Now for breast lymphedema, this risk is actually switched. The risk of getting lymphedema in the breast and chest is much higher for those who've had radiation compared to those who have not had radiation. The number of lymph nodes that someone has had removed still plays a role in the risk, but radiation is the largest risk. For both the arm and the breast, obesity and body mass index, or BMI, is another risk factor due to the potential for fatty tissue blocking or clogging the pathways. So anyone who has lymph nodes removed or radiation is at risk, and monitoring for any signs of swelling is important so that it can be addressed as soon as possible. So what do we look for? We want to know if there's any fullness in the breast or chest or arm, any skin texture changes of the breast, which we call pew to orange, which means it looks like a peel of an orange. We are feeling for any pitting, which is when the tissue stays indented when we press into it on the area that may be full or full of fluid. And some people don't have that pitting, they just have firmness and fullness in the arm or the chest. Someone with swelling or lymphedema of the breast or arm may explain that they feel that the area is heavy or achy or even painful to touch. They may notice that clothes fit differently on that side compared to the side that did not have surgery or radiation. Swelling may even wrap around the side of the chest and into the back so that individuals may notice that their arm does not rest fully against their side compared again to the other side. We want to make sure that we also look for any signs of swelling. So one thing we always do is have people make a fist with their hands and they're going to compare the two sides and we're looking at the knuckles or the bones. We're looking at the tendons that may stick out, the bones of the wrist and maybe those lines in the form where the muscles are, the bones around the elbows. And then we're also looking, you know, one side of the chest to the other and we're looking to compare the two. And if we no longer see those bony 
marks, those tendons stick out, or it just looks more full on one side or the other, it's usually pretty obvious. Those can be signs of swelling and lymphedema that we want to get addressed. So first, we always wanna make sure that someone also doesn't have an infection if we have any signs of swelling. So if someone has swelling that comes on really quickly and it's really painful, there's redness, and the breast or arm is hot to touch, then it's best to urgently seek out a doctor or seek medical attention. Someone may also have a small pocket of swelling, which is usually near an incision area or the surgical area after surgery, and this can be what we call a seroma. This is not usually lymphedema, especially if it's just that pocket, and some of these seromas will go away on their own or with light therapy treatment like light compression. But others who are there that are more significant or more painful, they may be drained. And it's usually because tissue is taken out for possibly like a lumpectomy or another surgery, and that area can fill with fluid and cause that pocket of swelling. But again, that is not lymphedema. Now, if cleared for any safety concerns, then there are treatment options for lymphedema of both the arm and the breast. Some need to wait until treatment is done to start certain treatment options, but some don't. So please work with your doctor or your therapist for more personalized medical guidance. If you're looking for more information on what these interventions or treatment options are, you can check out a couple other of my videos on my channel and I'll link a couple up above or down below. So what about other risks? What about other things or risks that you may have heard of that can cause lymphedema that we haven't yet spoken about? You may have heard that if you get your blood pressure taken or a needle stick for a blood draw in the arm that you had surgery or radiation, that this can cause lymphedema. Or maybe you've been told not to garden or not to get your nails done. In the past, these precautions were used, but there is new and updated research showing that these things do not directly cause lymphedema. But it's crucial that we explain why these precautions are being listed on websites or handouts and why it is not the act of doing them that will cause lymphedema. So in the case of blood pressure, it does temporarily decrease your blood flow, but it has not been shown to change the lymphatic flow in that arm. But if you have any concerns, just take the approach just to have your blood pressure taken or request to have it taken on the opposite side. So getting a small cut or scratch in the garden or getting a blood draw can cause a small opening in the skin. And anytime there is an opening in the skin, there is a risk for infection. An infection in the area that someone has had treatment may increase the risk of getting lymphedema. So if someone has a cut or scratch in the foot or the ankle and they have swelling, that's not usually lymphedema, although you still have a risk for infection, but you wanna make sure that you're really closely watching the side that you had surgery or radiation or treatment on. So the goal with these recommendations is really to try to decrease the risk for infection by keeping the skin healthy and minimizing the chance for any cuts or scratches when doing any yard work or getting your nails done or even shaving. Other questions or things that get brought up a lot are things like saunas or hot tubs and really we want to avoid things that have a lot of extra bacteria in them or anything that are you know, public pools that have more bacteria and then maybe you have an opening in your skin, you know, you're higher risk for infection in those ways too, as well as there's just more bacteria in those warmer environments, so just things to consider. So those are all the main risk factors for developing lymphedema in the breast, the chest, and the arm. Unfortunately, some individuals have a really low risk of developing lymphedema, but still do. There are other things like genetics and individual body systems that we just can't always account for. There are, however, things that someone can try to do to help lower the risk of developing lymphedema. So if you would like to learn more lifestyle ways that you can lower your risk, then you'll wanna check out my other video on this topic that I'll link up above and as well down below. So I hope you all found this video informative and helpful and we'll see you all in the next video. Thanks everyone.